Okay, Tommy, so back to Campbell's gym. A plethora and a whole hotbed of talent. Another British champion to have a Birkenhead was Les McAteer. Yeah. What can you tell us about Les? Well, Les McAteer, he was uh, just a little bit younger than myself. And I remember him uh, as an amateur with his uh, brother Gordon. And uh, what they were doing were boxing, I think it was for Wilson at the time. And um, Les went over to a club in uh, North Wales, Buckley. A man who worked on the same bill as myself, Johnny, uh, Johnny Mullen, run it. It was a Buckley ABC. Les won the Welsh title, he also won an ABA title there. But Les McIntyre yeah, was, uh, look, there was a good club at Buckley, there were some of their contemporaries there, and he done most of his training in Birkenhead as well. But Bert, Les McIntyre yeah, was a brilliant boxer. Now, he beat Harry Scott in an eliminator. It was a funny thing that Harry Scott had won and lost to uh, Neil McAteer as well, I was there on both occasions. But what I'm saying is this, Les McAteer, before Tom Bounce for the British title, eh, for the European title in Denmark, he uh, lost his title to the golden boy Mark Rowe. But Les McAteer, in my opinion, he could have been a lot better than what he was, because I don't think people give him credit for what he'd done. I mean, I don't think he, when I say he could have been a lot better than what he was, I think people didn't appreciate the skills. talent and the yeah. skills, uh, because Les McIntyre was a very, very good, confident boxer. He, see, he was one of these boxers that it doesn't matter what person brought, what anybody brought to the table, he'd find an answer for. Now, you don't get that with many, uh, he was adaptable. Yeah, he could adapt to any style. I mean, I saw him on many occasions. You'd think, "What's that? What's he doing? What's he doing?" And then all of a sudden, you'd see he got he got the formula, and then he was in full flow. And when Les McAteer was in full flow, he was a very very hard man to beat. I mean, to beat Wally Swift. For the British title speaks volumes. Wally Swift, I should say, was a real class act. And Les McAteer beat him for the title. That says it all. Because you believe me, uh, I mean, I'm not. Pat McAteer, Les McAteer, I mean, two champions in one family like that. I mean, there was a relative, and you've got to look at the talent that was around. I mean, that's another thing. I mean, it's not like today where some fighters have retired with multi-titles on 20 or 30 fights. Yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong, back in the Liverpool Stadium, you had to do 30 fights before they could get a six-rounder. Well, look, this is what I'm saying about saving your time. You, I mean, I've got some of the old things here with Pat McAteer's record and that on, and everything like that. You're talking about people that did have about 30 or 40 fights before they got a title fight. I mean, you believe me. I mean, these people were well schooled and on the way up. I mean, well, I'll tell you this straight, like, I mean, some of the bouts that, uh, I mean, some of these lads, and they were working at the time, like when Pat McAteer won his title, he was still an electrician at uh, Jesuit Colliery. He had a, a big support from the Wrexham area, Pat McAteer did. Les McAteer, Les McAteer was boxing over in Buckley. He had, he had support from North Wales. I mean, I'll be quite honest with you. I mean, you're talking about a different era. Of course. You know, I